hello there, Chelsea E. Leslie, I've never seen Chelsea spelled C H E L C E A. Pretty cool. Chelsea, you were born in 1884 and you lived in 1970. So I'm going to say, wow, that's a pretty long life. And I hope it was a good life for you, Chelsea. I hope you did not fear your death. And I hope you are resting and enjoying eternal peace in ways that only angels can. When I look at your headstone, um, the flat headstones into the ground like this, I always know that there is a problem with um, drainage. So I usually dig just a little ditch around while I'm cleaning. Of course, this all erodes back into the way it was. But at least for now, it helps me to clean your headstone. And, um, well, have it nice and pretty. I always like to use the phrase from Dirty Dancing when Patrick Swayze comes into the room that night and says, nobody puts baby in a corner. And that's how I feel with headstones, is that nobody should be forgotten. And in death, our names should be visible just as they should be visible in life. Chelsea, Chelsea, somebody loves you. I see these little flowers here for you. So that's nice. I do hope you had a good life. I'm still contemplating myself whether I want to be cremated and kept in a pretty dog treat jar or something in the house, or if I want to be buried in the ground. The one thing I feel about being buried in the ground is that, well, cemeteries, grave sites, they give people a place to come and offer their pieces, visit with you in death. Whereas if you're cremated in a pretty jar on a fireplace mantle or somewhere tucked away, nobody really can see you. I guess anything is possible. My whole reasons for not wanting to be buried in the ground are because, well, that's supposed to be eternal peace and in eternal peace, I would be laying on my stomach with my arm under my head right here, just sleeping. I can't stand the thought of thinking about being buried in the ground, you know, with my hands like this, just on my back, like I never sleep on my back. I also know you can still be embalmed and have your funeral services so people can see you. As my mother-in-law likes to say, dead and pretty. I don't think there's anything pretty about being dead, but I know what she means. And um, then I could get cremated after that. I do know it's important for a lot of people to see a body actually see the person dead it provides actual closure of our minds to know that somebody is in fact dead so and uh, the only place Before I started cleaning headstones, the only place I ever wanted to be buried was in my hometown of Maryland at Salem United Methodist graveyard. And yet, I've been cleaning headstones here at Oviedo Cemetery for several years now, and it's so beautiful, and I'm obviously so connected to this beautiful, peaceful place. 
um, and all of the souls that are here. So I do feel like, well, maybe I should be buried here. Again, my point is, if you don't talk about death as an adult with your loved ones, then that only puts them in a terrible position when you do die, and especially if it's sudden, like a car accident or fast cancer or something. Um, the more your family or loved ones know, about your wishes, the better. Chelsea, Chelsea. I do hope you had a beautiful life. I know that with all beautiful lives does come stress and chaos and drama as well. That's just life. Alright, so let's see where we're at now. Okay. And a little bit bigger of a trench. That we can do. I find it also most interesting that, well, even though death is so much a part of life, and we all do experience death, even with animals, Nobody really wants to talk about it. Like, come on. I like to talk to my mom about spirit animals and stuff so that if she dies before me and I see a particular animal, I'll know that it's my mom visiting me. I even asked my mom recently to tell me what her favorite songs are so that I can always hold on to that and think of her when I hear these songs as well as play them at her funeral. And do you know what my mom said? She wanted her song, uh, the number one song to be played at her funeral service was Another One Bites the Dust. So that's one that'll go over hard with my siblings. They'll be like, I don't think so. And yet, my mom expressed so truly. She wants that song. And then there's another song called Until We Meet Again. It's a really good one. I'm grateful that I ask these questions in regards to death so that I will be able to cope with death more when that time comes. All right, Chelsea, that's looking very nice. Let me just get my little chamois here. Oi! I've also been weeding, weeding in my backyard for four days straight, and so my body feels like <laughs> I feel like an old person whatever that feels like. Oh, that's very nice, Chelsea. It's perfect, actually. I've had my eye on your headstone for quite some time. Perfect.
So I don't want to take away from those flowers that are there. But my flowers are also my way of saying I've been here. So I'm going to put it right there for you. Chelsea, thank you for your life. And thank you for sharing in this moment with me.